Good evening. It's autoimmune disease night. This is one of my favorite seminars. <laughs> I like it. Uh, let's get going. I got a lot of scriptures for you tonight, so we can uh, go ahead and crank this. Our healing room is is booming, to my surprise. Both both uh, we've had two so far, and we've been swamped. So it's been going fantastic. Lots of people are getting healed. A few people haven't been. All right, tonight's our seminar for autoimmune diseases. Remember the radio programs, I'm on every day of the week, a couple times, and then on the weekends once, Saturday and Sunday. My uh, radio programs are going to be changing next month. This is the last month. They'll be on soundcloud.com. I'll give you the other information later. The uh, radio station is changing servers. Uh, oops. March 10th. That is an incorrect slide. And the time is also wrong. Dis disregard that slide, please. Just close your eyes. You never saw that slide. Wait a minute. This is mass hypnosis. That's My critics are right. Okay. If you want to help us out and you don't have any money, you can do it if you switch over from Google to Good Search and put in our charity name, Hardcore Christianity. They'll pay us while you're looking through the internet, watching deliverance videos, and learning how to manifest. Now, that's a big problem we're running into. Every ministry all over the United States now has a YouTube problem. What is it? People are watching deliverance videos. That's good. And they're watching them, and it's, some of them it's helping, and the demons now know YouTube's available, so they now are teaching people how to get delivered. So now we have to weed through the people who are manifesting from watching YouTube videos as opposed to repenting, and the spirits are actually coming out. Never a dull moment around here. It's not just me. Everybody's having to face it. <clears throat> so, oh, we'll take it as we see it. Anyway, we got four, four YouTube channels, and uh, this one will be broadcast and saved on our YouTube channel uh, after tonight. And in fact, it'll be on this one. Friday nights is on our YouTube channel here. Thursday nights we broadcast on live stream. If you know someone that needs to be delivered, please... Have them send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com, and I'll send them one of two miracle lists so they can get healed at home. Uh, a woman called me this week and said, uh, "This mega, she went to a mega church here in town. If I said what it was, you'd know who they were. Um, they said that the entire pastoral staff told their people in a big group, not to come over here. Do not go over to the Deliverance Center and don't have anything to do with Mike Smith uh, because I don't have any covering here. First of all, that's not in the Bible. That's something somebody made up. Okay, they're, here's your covering. They're terror cells. The Bible says where two or three people are gathered together in the name of the Lord, that's where the Holy Ghost is. There's your covering. The Holy Ghost is your covering. Amen. Amen. Not, not the Presbyterians and the Lutherans. <laughs> and secondly, uh, this mega church that was trashing me over there, I got a stack of interview forms from people that have come over here from that church and gotten delivered wow. over the years. Got a whole stack of them. Thirdly, nobody's dumb enough to be my covering. Can you imagine? Did you hear what he said? Unbelievable. This guy's crazy. So, don't worry about that. I don't. If I don't worry about stuff, you shouldn't be worrying about stuff. When I first started in the ministry and everybody was trashing me, it kind of bothered me. And I felt rejected. I got over that in about six months. If you're going to serve God, you're going to have to forget about what people say about you. you 
You cannot live your life by what people think of you. What God thinks of you, and that's how you live your life. Thanks for your donations. You've got to pay the bills around here. We do not pay any salaries around here. I am working on a uh, Holy Ghost yacht. I have, a, <laughs> I have it on order from the Kenneth Copeland Foundation. Now, stop it. Stop that. Do you need a re donation receipt for last year? I'd be happy to give you one. Send me an email or call me or something. be happy to. You can donate uh, off the uh, website if you'd like. And we appreciate that too. Okay. That's the end of that. Autoimmune diseases are very interesting because they illustrate the incredible power of the human soul. You're made out of five parts, as you know. You have a body, a soul, a spirit, a mind, and a conscience. All five of these parts of you work independently, and they all work collectively at the same time. It's the miracle of God's creation. Man is the top of God's natural world. His greatest creation was Adam. In the spirit world, it's a different story, but in the natural world, hey, human beings are God's uh, greatest and best creation. Why? We look, first of all, we look like him. Not exactly like him, but we're patterned after him. Yahweh, or Jehovah, the great Hebrew God, has two arms, two legs, a torso, So, we look like him. That's how he made us. As any father would want his children to be. You have a child, you weren't praying, Lord, I always wanted a baboon. Can you come back here? No. You wanted a child that looked, looked like you. They call them chips off the old block. Perfectly normal. God is has the same features. So you break down these five parts and you come tonight on our study of the soul and you see that science, if it's legitimate science, always proves the Bible true. Junk science does not. Okay? Evolution is junk, trash science. That is not true. That's a theory. It has never been proven. And there are no examples of it. In the scientific world, though, if they research something and it's true, it always lines up with the Bible. Scientists have proven through extensive research that emotions and stress affect the physical body. It's a medical fact. It is. They have proven through empirical research that certain types of illnesses in the body are caused by emotions and stress. For example, ulcers, heart attacks. There are certain types of illnesses that react to negative emotions in your body over a protracted or prolonged period of time. True? Yes. And it's a fact. Yes. It's also a biblical truth. It's also in the Bible, and I'll show you the scriptures tonight. People who have damaged souls can develop certain types of illnesses, and in the medical field they're called autoimmune diseases. They're diseases caused by people who have damaged souls. I'll show you how that works tonight. How was that for an introduction? Right. <laughs> we'll see. Now here we go. It says autoimmune diseases. There's all kinds of different autoimmune diseases. There's two different types, systemic and specific. And again, it's all how they uh, attack the different organs in the body. 
Uh, they're basically incurable. Diabetes is not technically, I think, listed as an autoimmune disease, but it acts exactly like one. It has all the same features of, an, of AI. And here's the major kinds of them. Number one is rheumatoid arthritis. This is number 1% of the world's population have it. Women are three times more likely to have uh, rheumatoid arthritis than men. For example, here's two famous stars that had severe cases of it. One was, who's that? I Love Lucy, and then James Coburn, he's still alive, she's dead. But anyway, this disease causes the joints to morph. It's an extremely painful disease and an ugly one. And uh, thyroid diseases are also autoimmune diseases. They can't get rid of them. They don't really know what causes them. But after tonight, we'll, we'll know that. Graves disease, Hashimoto's. Anna Nicole Smith had Graves disease. Uh, it's a thyroid issue, and the glands are affected by it. <clears throat> Soldier syndrome also is an autoimmune disease. Once again, swelling, usual swelling glands. Notice it usually starts in the 40s because autoimmune diseases are directly related to your soul. It takes years of soul pain to develop an autoimmune disease in most cases. What happens is the soul turns on the person through chronic negativity, self-hatred, self-disgust, guilt, shame, humiliation, self-hatred. These things in the soul send a message to the body and eventually over a period of time the body turns on itself and the body starts to attack itself and that's why they can't cure them because it's a soul issue and medical science doesn't believe in the spirit world they don't believe in God individuals do in the medical field but I mean generally speaking scientific research in the medical field is anti-God and they do not believe in spirits and souls and eternity and heaven or hell or anything like that so they don't understand how the soul works it's the seat of human emotion and when you're a person who has been wounded and hurt severely over the years you carry these wounds around in your soul and these wounds emit negative emotions they cause negative illnesses physical and mental a long-term depression is caused by soul scars soul wounds negative emotions out of the soul when you have a friend a friend or relative who dies it's perfectly normal to go through a period of depression if you were close to them it is abnormal to stretch that out that's demonic the devil will try to take your normal pain and your normal depression and your normal emotions and extend them out for his usage as you do that over usually starts in the 40s decades the body eventually turns on itself and starts attacking itself okay? once that's repaired the body starts to recover uh, Venus Williams is a supposedly the greatest tennis player that ever lived she has autoimmune diseases how'd she get them grew up with a insane dad all kinds of emotional trauma in the family lots of fighting lots of divorces lots of remarriages lots of trauma uh, once again it's a soul based issue that causes the body to turn on itself if you hate yourself you hate others you carry around guilt and shame chronic frustrations 
disgust for yourself and others. Breaches in loved ones, mother, father, spouses, children. You carry this around for years, you will eventually develop an autoimmune disease. Because your body finally says, you hate me? Okay, I give in. I'm going to hate you too. I don't know if this makes any sense, but um, this kind of a background of abuse and pain and suffering, self-disgust, self-rejection, self-hatred, shame and guilt, as you carry these things in your soul and carry these wounds with you over the years, you can't really develop an autoimmune disease, click, and you, you've got one. It, it usually takes time for them to develop as your soul slowly turns on you. Lupus is an autoimmune disease. Way more effective in women than men. Nine times more effective. Here's an advanced case of it, but if you dug back into this poor woman's life, you'd see the childhood, the wounds, the molestation, the beatings, the verbal abuse, the rejection, the divorces, the chronic negativity. It all stores up in the human soul. And your soul is incredibly powerful. Is it not? You got to have a soul to be a human being. You got to have a soul to fall in love. You got to have a soul to accomplish anything in life. You, know? you got to uh, be a soul, have a strong soul to be a professional. Do you know? You got to have a soul to be married. You gotta have a strong one. You gotta be able to have regular emotions like a normal human being, but they have to be controlled emotions, correct? Laughing is good. You laugh out of your soul. Great. God gave you that. Too much laughter. Oops, now we're in trouble. Anger is good. Works works great. Ah. Too much anger, misdirected anger, self-anger. Uh-oh. Now we've headed down the road to a autoimmune disease. These famous stars have lupus, Lady Gaga, uh, Leon Lopez. MS is a uh, AI disease. Usually strikes later in life. Uh, Richard Pryor had it. Annette Funicello, she was on uh, TV as a kid. Mickey Mouse outfit. Yeah, and it's uh, once again, it's a neuromuscular disease that uh, tears the person down. And then diabetes acts exactly like a autoimmune disease. I'm not, sh I don't think it's technically uh, listed as one. It is spreading like wildfire in America. It's just absolutely amazing how many people now have diabetes. Really shocking. But again, if they've got real bad cases of it, you look back in their family tree and you'll see the same pattern in your counseling sessions while you're interviewing them, while you're talking to them, while you're living with them. It's the same thing. Lots of pain in childhood, fighting, strife, negativity, self-negativity, disappointments, heartaches that store in the soul and they just carry them year after year. As others pile up, they're carrying them and they suddenly, boop, they come up with diabetes out of the blue. These type of actors are multimillionaires. has nothing to do with money. It's a soul issue. You can be rich and famous and sick rich and famous. The devil is an indiscriminate killer. He doesn't care whether you got money or you're broke. He'll smash you like a bug and never give you another chance. If he gets a chance, he'll take it. These women here, rich and beautiful and sick. Why? Soul issue. Halle Berry, she's a gorgeous woman, uh, great actress and so on. Grew up with broken homes, heartache, lots of family problems. 
you can trail these autoimmune diseases back to the sorrow where they start in almost every case. Addison's disease is an adrenal gland autoimmune disease. The president had it and he suffered with it, you know, for years. There's your glands on top of your kidneys. That's where that starts. But again, it actually starts in the human soul. Here's a particularly hideous disease. What's this one? Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah. Fortunately, MS and ALS are very low percentage diseases, thank God. Very, very small number of people have these diseases, but if you work with these patients and counsel them, I have over the years, it's the same pattern. You trail it right back and it starts in childhood and it moves forward. Brokenness, broken families, strife, divorces, heartaches, sorrows, miseries, self-hatred, self-disgust, guilt. Guilt is huge. Guilt is really big. The person can't forgive themselves. The person's hard on themselves. When you meet somebody like that, they're a prime candidate for an AI disease later. They're prepping it as they go. Yeah. The gospel allows you to forgive yourself. Yeah, because if God forgives you and he doesn't remember what you did, you then have the privilege of doing it to yourself. That one issue alone stabs about 50% of the AI diseases right in the eye. Because most people that have those, half of them at least, very hard on themselves and very hard on their parents. There's a breach with the parents. In almost every case, if you trail it back, you'll see that. And young people, they trash their parents. They're off and they're gone. It catches up with you later. There's the arthritis. There's the fibro. You know, all of a sudden it's starting to come in and your body is turning on yourself. You, you told your mother to go suck eggs. Whoa, that allowed the demons to put a curse on you. And they are going to come back, and you're going to pay. You're going to, as the Bible says, reap what you sow. But in Christianity, when you get born again, you got the Holy Ghost, you realize, hey, wait a minute. Freely I have received, so freely I get. I mean, I, I had a billion sins God got rid of. So since I was forgiven all of these horrible things, I can forgive mom for being nuts. And it's very common for a child to have a mother who's nuts. It's routine. Routine. The devil takes advantage of that commonality to place curses on children. And he's legally allowed to do it because the Bible says, Thou shalt not dishonor thy mother nor thy father. As soon as you trash your parents, you're trashing yourself. But when you get the Holy Ghost, you let them go. Because God let you go. See, you should have never been saved, hot shot. Some of you should already be dead and in hell. And that's what you deserve. You didn't get what you deserved. You got mercy. Since you got mercy, you are now in a divine position to give mercy. That sermon will preach. These guys got severe uh, ALS. Hawking is, I think he's still alive. Is he? he alive? He's got a hideous case of it. Oh, there's all kinds of other ones. Guillain Barr. You've seen these before. Here's a very common one, scleroderma. That's, that's rapidly growing quickly. 
Meniere's disease, different skin disorders, bowel disorders. Every, it's a medical researched fact, it's got nothing to do with God, that emotional illnesses affect your organs, particularly stomach, intestines, bowels. This stuff here starts falling apart. And it's coincidental. Uh, I made that term up. I learned years ago, fear spirits hide in this area. And I noticed in my mind, I said to myself, hey, wait a minute. There's got to be some correlation between fear spirits always being in this area. They always seem to move around here. It's weird. And these organ issues, plumbing problems, uterine issues, gut problems, ulcers, bleh. What's that stuff? Acid reflux. What's the other one? Uh, IBS. Oh, I saw. Hey, I think there's a correlation there between these fear spirits and these gut issues. Hey, there was. <laughs> okay, what's the root of these diseases? Let's take a quick look at it. It's this monster. The spirit of rejection starts this whole thing going. He gets in in childhood during tr periods of trauma or extreme disappointment. He gets into the child's brain here, and he begins at that very moment to morph that person into another person. It's uncanny how he does it. He gets into the brain during period of sexual abuse, verbal abuse, beatings, car accidents, trauma, whatever it is. He makes the jump, and as soon as he gets in, the child doesn't know he's in there. And he slowly, over a period of time, starts to take over their mind. How does he do it? Well, we've been over this before. He starts putting thoughts in the child's mind. And at first, they're benign thoughts, like, look at that kitty and look at that balloon. Look over there. Oh, there's a butterfly. And he keeps doing that continuously until something happens which radically changes the child's life for the rest of their lives. As soon as they look over there, it's over for them. When they look over there and see the pretty balloon, look at that butterfly, oh, it's pretty. And you do look, the kid looks. At that point, the child doesn't know the difference between one of their thoughts and one of his thoughts. If you don't know the difference between your thought and a thought from a spirit, the spirit then can control you by putting thoughts in your mind. As soon as the child looks at the butterfly or looks at the balloon, he switches gears and puts negative thoughts in the child's mind from that point on. They're usually personal thoughts, so you can give them an AI later. You're stupid, you're fat, you're ugly, you're an idiot, you're a moron, no one loves you, God hates you, people don't like you, and it goes on and on and on. And what he's doing there is molding in the soul low self-esteem and a low self-concept. And as soon as he gets that molded, he can now start reinforcing it, which is what he does. As they get older, he starts using other people to reinforce the fact that you think you suck. Parents say rotten negative things. Cousins, neighbors, friends. Then he traumatizes you huge. You start school. And he starts drawing in bullies and people who make fun of you. What is he doing there? He's trying to tear you down and dominate you through chronic negativity. He also starts to let in other spirits into your body. One of them is fear. All high-level demons always use fear spirits as partners. You'll find fear spirits in almost every case of demonic infestation. They always help out. The fear spirits are the one that controls the person. Fear is the 
wedge that drive into you, that control you. Fear of being rejected. Fear of not being included. Fear of not being liked or loved. Fear of dying alone. Fear of not having any money to survive. Fear of not having any fear. It, the list of fears is unlistable. Then he lets in a lust spirit. And the lust spirit is designed to bless you. The spirit of lust is there to help you. Get a relief from the other spirits. It's all a setup. Here, it's a drug. Here's some booze. Here's some sex. Let's go gamble. Let's look at porn. Whatever it is. It's designed to give you a little respite. So you feel better. Here's a pizza. Here's some food. Here's drugs. Here's some porn. Here's an orgasm. Here's that. Feel good? You happy with that? Okay, I'm done. And then the other demons swap. The lust demon backs off and the torture chamber starts again. They start torturing you again, driving you back to the lust spirit. The lust spirit comes in again. Hey, back off of this guy. Time for lust, time for sex, time for food, time for drugs. Feel better? Yeah. Okay. You go back to them now. Low self-esteem, low self-concept, self-hatred, self-disgust, anger toward others, bitterness, fear of being alone, fear of being afraid, fear of dying, fear of friends dying, fear. Oh, you feel any better? Oh, come over here. There you go. Feel better? Good. Let's keep doing that. And they, this catch-22 goes on and on and on until they reach their goal where you are now an addict. Once you're an addict, this system runs on its own. It runs by itself. It runs uncontrolled. It runs unstopped. The demons don't have to work anymore. They just sit and watch. As the body now is addicted, the emotions, soul are now addicted. The mind is now addicted. It becomes an obsession. You've got to keep eating. You've got to keep drinking. Got to keep shooting. What are they trying to do? Kill you, duh. If they can't kill you, then later on they got backup plans. One of them is an autoimmune disease. If you have or know someone that has these kinds of emotional issues in their soul, they either have an autoimmune disease or they're going to get one. Self-hatred, guilt, conflict with yourself. I wish I wasn't born. Uh, why wasn't I born in this family? I wish I could die. Why can't I die? I've had many Christians tell me in counseling sessions, they prayed and asked God to take them home. <laughs> they prayed and asked God to let them die. The prayer obviously wasn't answered because I was, was talking to him, but that's a prayer God's not going to answer for you. Okay? What he's going to tell you to do is, let's get healed of autoimmune diseases. I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost tonight to fix that for you. That's his answer. You're not dying. You're getting healed. And then you're going to help somebody else who's sick to get healed. Comprende? Oh, see. Sí. <laughs> see. Sí. Yep. The demon of rejection is a credible lover. He's an expert on love. Here's how he does it. <clears throat> he teaches the young person that love is based on performance. So if you do a good job, people will like you. Okay? So you've got to perform to be accepted and perform to be loved, which is 100% demonic. God's love is agape, is unconditional love, which means you're loved regardless of your performance, good, bad, or indifferent. Okay? If your performance is terrible, you're loved exactly the same as if your performance was great. Unconditional love never changes under any circumstances, good or bad. If you are failing and screwing up, you're loved exactly the same as if your 
succeeding and helping others to the max. I'm as loved tonight as I was years ago when I was drunk and chasing chicks. Huh? Nobody here has ever been drunk or chasing chicks. Oh, okay. Got a holy crowd here tonight. This isn't going to work. I might as well go home. No, you're as loved now as you were when you backslid. You didn't hear me. When you told God to screw himself. You were as loved then as you were when you were in the choir worshiping him. Who's not listening to me? Raise your hand. You're not listening. Raise your hand. God's love, unlike human love, is unconditional and does not change. You hear me? It doesn't change no matter what you do. Human love's not like that. So the demons, the rejection demon tells you, man, you've got to perform to be accepted by others. And he trains the person to believe that. Once the person believes that, they are in deep trouble because everybody screws up. It's part of human nature. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's even close to perfect. Well, there are a few exceptions, and we are available. But the demons know that everybody's going to screw up. So every time you screw up, they jump on you like a pack of wolves. And they heap shame and doubt and failure on you. What are they doing? Trying to get you to commit suicide, duh. But if you won't commit suicide, what are they doing? Working on their backup plan. An autoimmune disease later. Why? No one ever performs up to anybody's standard. Even if you're like perfect, there's always somebody going to nitpick you. It's impossible. If you don't believe me, get married. <laughs> you could clean everything up and, hey, you missed that. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. God. <laughs> as soon as you hear that, you're working on an autoimmune disease right there. Don't even know it. Nobody is perfect. Everybody fails. God's love never changes, no matter how often you fail or how you fail. What am I doing right now? I'm poking an ice pick in these demons' eyes tonight because they don't want you to hear these kind of truths. They don't want, they don't want to hear that. Because they know they're going to get their face kicked in in about 45 minutes at this altar. <laughs> The Holy Ghost always moves at an autoimmune disease seminar. Oh, it's it's good. You, you wait and see. Ugh. He's going to kick some tonight. If you repent of believing in performance love, we can stop this syndrome you're in. We can win this thing. Love doesn't depend on performance. It's a lie. It is a lie. And the fifth one is the usual, some kind of a problem with a parent that is extremely dangerous to have in your life. Uh, well, I don't have a problem with my mom and dad, Brother Mike. I never talk to them anymore. <laughs> Whoa. Well, later on, an AI will be talking to you. So let's face that now. Right. So the AI doesn't face you later. That's right. okay. wow. Oh, I'm good with mom. I haven't talked to her in 20 years. I don't even think about her anymore. Okay, that's a trick of the wow. devil. He helped you blot her out of your mind. Because he's got a little surprise for you. An autoimmune disease coming later.
Well, this isn't an uplifting message. Actually, it is. I'm actually showing you how to get healed, believe it or not. It doesn't sound good, but, you know, I've never, uh, never cared much about that. My dad, oh my God, he, he abandoned us. He married six other women. He lives in Hawaii now. He's in jail. Yeah. I haven't talked to him. If, uh-oh. Why not? Oh, I don't know. I moved on. Yeah, you moved on. You're closer to an AI disease now than you were then when you moved on. Let's get that fixed. Get that wound out of there. Let's go to the Lord and repent of it. And let's get healed so we don't have to face an AI later. That's my recommendation. Here's some other killers that will destroy you. Chronic fears, anxiety, jealousy, and self-rejection is the worst one. The rejection demon gets you to reject yourself. He gets others to reject you. Okay? Just a couple days ago, I was counseling with somebody over the internet and the person's telling me man I have had so many broken relationships I every now I don't even want to talk to men anymore I don't like men uh, I, I don't I don't even, man I can't take it anymore every one of them does Boop. okay you avoiding men and becoming celibate or a lesbian or something that is not going to fix its problem. Okay, this is a soul issue, and you've got a man-hater down there that's going to catch you later with an AI. Some people can't stand people. <laughs> period. <laughs> not just men, people, period. Okay. And they live very hard, lonely lives. And they, they get all kinds of AIs. Because there's like 7 billion people running around the planet. And they're hard to get away from. And the demons, if you know, if you don't like people, they'll send you people. That's right. That's a fact right there. That actually happens. I'm not making that up in the least. The devil will always send you the one thing you don't want. Yeah, happens at work all the time. It does. It's unbelievable. You can be in a mall and you know there's like twenty five hundred people there, and run into somebody you don't like. There they. It's unreal. I mean, what are the odds of? <laughs> What's he doing there? He's the demons are picking at your soul. They're trying to generate your emotions. Because they're we're still working on that AI you, you're going to be getting 12 years from now. Hello? This thing on? Uh, envy and jealousy are as toxic as, as drinking liquid plumber. It's vicious. The, these, these emotions will rip you to shreds quickly. Quickly. All right? Let's go over this one. Here's how your AIs work. There's a difference between iniquity, nomia, and sin, hamartia. Iniquity is what's inside you, and sin is usually what you're doing on the outside. See? So if you're uh, committing adultery, the lust is inside of you, iniquity, and the behavior is sinful behavior. Okay? Iniquity is the forerunner to your sin. Otherwise, it's not sin. It's usually a mistake. There's a difference between sinning and having a mistake. Sin is relative. Something may be sinful to you, but not him. There are sins of commission and sins of omission. A sin of omission may be a sin to you, but not her. 
See, it may be uh, God's will for you to do something, but not that person. So that's a sin of omission. If you didn't do it, but she didn't do it, that's not a sin to her because she wasn't asked to do it by God, if that makes any sense. Some sins are relative. It's the iniquity that triggers the damage on the soul. You carry inside you envy, hatred, bitterness, anger. It only manifests later and becomes a sin when you do it. I may hate your guts, that's my iniquity, but I'm not sinning because I'm not yelling at him yet. <laughs> Correct? Yes. I haven't yelled at you and could give you a good cousin. That would be a sin. Correct? But it's only an expression of my iniquity poured out on him. It's the stored up iniquity in the soul that gets the person in the long run. See? When you got caught stealing, see? a couple days ago, some poor kid, mentally ill kid, shoots up a bunch of students at a school, and this is now happening so often you can't keep them, you can't remember them anymore, one from the other. But anyway, this Murder, mass murder, was in the person long before he ever fired a bullet. It, it had been brewing in his soul for years before that. He was bullied in school, his parents died, stopped it out, self-hatred, other people hated him. This hatred for people and this desire for revenge or justice was the iniquity in his soul that happened years before he actually shot those kids a couple days ago. I think it was in Florida. Is this making sense? Iniquity precedes the sin. It's, it's the root of it. It's the foundation for it. It's the hamburger helper. Do they still sell hamburger helper? <laughs> I, I don't know where that came from. It just popped in my head. That's weird. I don't think they... you probably never heard of it. Have you? If you, when I was a kid, we had this hamburger helper, and it was a bunch of crap. You, you, don't, you can't afford any meat, so you've got to put a lot of crap in it, make it look like there's some meat. That's what white trash people like me, we ate. We would fill her. You put filler in the food because there wasn't enough food. As a kid, if you're raised... You know, we were... We were trashy folks, and... And that thing just came out. Hamburger Helper. Weird. I hadn't thought about Hamburger Helper. Maybe it's an inspiration. Yeah, that's what it was. That's the ticket. <laughs> hamburger Helper. What happened there? AI diseases can't be cured. Why? Because it's not a medical problem. It's a soul issue. And if you don't know there's no a soul problem, there's no physician there to heal you, Jeremiah chapter 8. And your health cannot recover from an AI disease because there's issues in the soul causing the person to be ill. Jeremiah 30, your bru bru bruise is incurable and your wound is grievous. Jeremiah 46, go up into Gilead and take balm, you virgins, the daughter of Israel, in vain. You will use many medicines. Now you're talking about AI. These poor patients take everything and anything to stop this thing. But because it's a soul issue and that hasn't been fixed, they got to keep struggling to get healed. And they will not be cured. This rejection spirit uses your mind as well as your soul and your emotions by using 
chronic negativity Job chapter chapter 10 my soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself Self-hatred Being hard on yourself being critical of yourself nitpicking yourself like your mom did nitpicking yourself like your dad did this is deadly deadly and it is the opposite of Christianity because when you're washed in the blood there's nothing wrong with you anymore there's nothing there to knit or pick except that yawn that was a that's I see that I have that often don't worry about that I work through that there's no sin there to knit or pick. The child of God is sinless in the eyes of God. If you think you're, you're not that way, what you're really saying is that the blood of Jesus is deficient, it's a failure, and it doesn't cover everything, and the blood is not good enough. No Christian in the right mind, or even partially in the right mind, would ever make a statement like that. Would they? They got to be nuts to say that. So there's nothing to knit and pick in God's world. He's always 100% on your side. Always trying to make you better. Always trying to help you. Always wanting to heal you. Never turning his back on you. <coughs> Why? You're unconditionally loved, washed in the blood. You're in. Yeah. And you can tell your diabetes that tonight. <laughs> Suck on that. <laughs> but bitterness comes from where? It's in the soul. You want justice. You want revenge. You want... <sighs> and it comes from the beating your dad gave you. Somebody abandoned you. Somebody hurt you. Somebody degraded you. Somebody cheated on you. And this bitterness dropped in there. The demons helped you put it in there. The rejection demon fostered it and blessed it once you develop bitterness it eventually turns on yourself as an autoimmune disease you will reap what you sow Proverbs 70 a foolish son is grief to his father and bitterness you have no idea how many sick parents there are with autoimmune diseases because their son or daughter is an addict drunk all kinds of other things children can cause parents to in Christianity it's the opposite by faith in Jesus Christ and by trust in God's Word you turn that child over to God that child is not your responsibility anymore I'm relieving my soul of my dysfunctional son or daughter they're both barnyard crazy Lord <laughs> Here you go. You're the only person that can handle a deranged child. I cannot take it anymore. He's yours. She's yours. This makes sense. But people who don't listen to God, in uh, 1 Peter, casting all our care upon him for he cares for us, people who don't do that and don't believe that, they keep trying to hang on to a crazed child and keep trying to fix them. It's a trick of the devil. They will get an AI disease later. They're using the kid to get to the parent. It's a trick. We can't just abandon somebody. No, you're a Christian and you're not abandoning anybody. You're turning them over to the Lord and getting yeah. your ignorant self out of the way. No offense. Yeah. You're the jacked up one, <laughs> not the kid. What are you talking about? My kid's on heroin. My, my daughter's drunk. She's pregnant again. No, you're the jacked up one. Turn her over to the Lord. Yeah, right. You don't think the Holy Ghost can't hunt her down? Come on. Stop it. He's not going to do a cotton picking thing to help that kid until you let that kid go. He's not going to help him. He'll keep him alive. But you'll be getting a call again. Hey, mom, can you bail me out? Yep. <laughs> sure. 
No, I turned you over to God. Did you hear that codependent mother over there? Sure, I'll do it again because I like autoimmune diseases. I love autoimmune diseases. My feet are falling off. I've got diabetes. Oh, that's beautiful. I'll be right down to get you, honey. What are you, stupid? Hey, do it God's way. Do it God's way and save your life. Oh, that's a good sermon. That'll preach. Go ahead and steal that one. <laughs> Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, Ephesians 4, and evil speaking, put it away from you with all malice. Why? So you don't get an autoimmune disease, dude. Psalms 10, 107. They are diminished, brought low through what? Oppression and rah, evil, and sorrow. What is Yagon? Depression and what is depression? Number one, illness in America. Far out distancing cancer and heart disease. No comparison. Depression so far ahead, those will never catch up. There's only one thing to catch up with depression. Nuclear war. Yes. Yeah. It's so far in front. It can't be caught by any illness at all. Number one illness in America, depression. Why do the demons love depression so much? It helps you get your AI going. Here's what science already knows is a fact. It's already been researched. Proverbs 17 is a medical proven fact. A merry heart works like a medicine. A raka, a wounded spirit, causes what? Illnesses in the body. Arthritis, <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, uh, de degenerative disc de de disease, uh, what else? All kinds of weird joint problems are caused by negative emotions, hatred, envy, bitterness. Folks, come on. Proverbs 15, a merry heart makes... A cheerful account as well. No kidding. You can look at somebody and read them pretty good, can't you? Sorrow of the heart breaks the person down. No kidding. Psalms 41, I said, Lord, be merciful to me and heal my soul. And that's your prayer tonight. We're all going to do that together, just like King David taught us. King David had a crushed soul, but he got healed. You're getting healed. But you got to admit your sin first. Oop, there it is. Particularly if it's a parent issue, a spouse issue. Another big one is ex-spouses. Oh, an ex-spouse. Oh. oh, particularly if they screwed you over bad, took your money, took your kids, took something, took the car. That's the worst one. Oh. <laughs> A spouse, ex-spouse, taking the car. Now, that's a low blow. Okay, the kids, negotiable. Car, whoa. <laughs> Particularly if there's no payments on it. Ooh. There it is. How long will you forget me, Lord? Forever. And a person with autoimmune disease frequently has this thoughts. The demons pump them into their mind continuously. God has abandoned you. Yeah. They think it all the time. How long are you going to hide yourself from me? He's not hiding from me. He's right there. The demons are blocking it. Exactly. See? Father sends blessings to his children, but the demons can block them. And the person can block them. Blessings are not required to be accepted. It's only accepted optionally. It's All this is done on a volunteer basis. You're not forced to get healed, forced to get saved, or forced to be blessed. It's your option to take it. God doesn't force you to get saved, did he? Was anybody here forced to get saved? It's not going to happen. God doesn't want androids and robots. He wants loving followers who choose of their own free will, which is in your mind. I choose you. 
Nobody forced him to send Jesus here to save us. He sent us from his own free will. Nobody forced Jesus to go to the cross. Did they? Far from it. He said, nobody's going to take my life. I'm laying it down. How long will you take counsel in my soul? Once again, there's the emotions. This is an emotional thing. Sorrow in my heart. It's all emotions. How long will the enemy be exalted over me? As long as uh, you don't listen to these scriptures. That's how long. As soon as you start listening to these scriptures and get this stuff out of your soul, this autoimmune disease is going to take a hike. That's an old Arabic phrase. <laughs> Proverbs 14, a sound heart is the life of the flesh. Envy rots. Araka. Decays the bones. Can't you see it? This is, uh, this is medical. It's emotional. It's the soul. It's the body at play here. Jeremiah 4. He had a panic attack when he saw Israel and Jerusalem being overrun. Where, is he, where does he have it at? Exactly where everybody else has the mat. The fear of spirits usually hide here, and it's bowel issues, stomach, ulcers, IBS, diarrhea, constipation. Oh, nobody here has ever had that? Great. <laughs> Thanks for leaving me up here all by myself. That's good. Oh, there goes Mike again. It's only him. Okay, my heart is making a noise. It sure is. Have you ever noticed panic? It's beaten in there. No kidding. I can't hold my peace. Have you ever met somebody who, who uh, talks out their fears? Huh? Of course you have. Probably married to one. They won't stop talking. <laughs> what is causing that? Fear. That's not them trying to get useful information to you. It's fear generating verbiage. Bah, 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 bah. Like a, it's kind of like a tick. <laughs> Only it's verbal. Okay? There's a root to a tick. There's a root to people who talk all the time. Does this make sense? But my soul, once again, it's in the emotions, in the soul. Or is scared. He hears, the, he hears the trumpet. What are those called? What's that called? A trigger. Yes, sir. A trigger. Anybody here have a trigger? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> a lot of times it's related to... You run into somebody who reminds you of somebody in your path and you feel a something, whoa, something moving. There it is. Yep. Or a smell. Oh, jeez. That reminds me, you smelled something in your past during a trauma period. It triggers again. Again, the soul. The spirits are using your environment to trigger you. Sometimes we use a cell phone. And they start playing. And then a lot of people go, kill that person. <laughs> what you speak affects your health. Did you know that? Proverbs 12 you, the demons will deliberately use other people, and they do it all the time, not just spouses. That's the most frequent one because they're around more often. But when you walk out the door, they bring in hordes of what? Bats, flies? No. Worse, other humans. The humans begin to come at you. It's like a Steven Spielberg movie. And they're sent in. They're plants, and they're triggers, particularly they say something hurtful, stupid, ignorant, asinine, imbecilic, click, and it's designed ahead of time, planned out, to trigger you. Yes, sir. Spouses are good at that, particularly right after you wake up. That's right. That's it. The demons go, hey, doofus, uh, here, okay, time to stop the sex dream. Stop it. 
Stop. Oh, they're not chasing you. Wake up. Hold a minute. Your wife's in the hall. Wake up. Come. There she is, right on top of you. And the other person doesn't know they're being used. But they're being used to trigger something in your soul that hurt in your past. Ow. Once you remove that wound, the trigger doesn't affect you. That's how it works. Once the Holy Ghost removes that wound on your soul, and only He can do it, the triggers don't work anymore. What happens then? That other person, that other thing, those other people have no control over you anymore. You're free. Soul ties are, are triggers on steroids. A soul tie is a demonic catch in there, soul to soul. It could be anything. Lust, anger, bitterness, whatever it is. Once that's severed, that person doesn't affect you at all anymore. Once you release that insane, your insane daughter who's on crack and you give her to God, that pain is severed. And now you can be healed. See? Once that hook in you is gone and that wound's healed, the other person loses control over you. See? And if the other person is smarter than you, they'll use your reaction to their behavior deliberately to control you. They know what to say, how to say it, how to, how to piss you off, how to trigger your lust, how to trigger your loneliness, how to trigger your fears. They'll click it deliberately. We call it what? Manipulation. Once that hooks out of there, that person cannot manipulate you anymore. You get healed. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the Yes. Oh my gosh, isn't that the truth? Everybody knows that. You don't have to have a degree in psychology to get any of this stuff. This is pure common sense. I went down to Tucson and my granddaughter was in a play. And she came out and I said, Hey, honey, I can't even believe it. I mean, you're Meryl Streep. <laughs> I can't even believe it. I mean, you are the greatest thing on the planet. I mean, I hit her hard. She was beaming. I could have had the opposite effect if I chose to do it, which I never would. You know, you're acting, your, your body posture is poor. Okay, your, your legs were, your face, your tone was weak. Oh man, that what was it? Thank you, Grandpa. No, that wouldn't have happened. I would have beaten her down, right? Because she like respects me. She likes me. I want to keep that relationship for spiritual reasons later. I want to keep that open. See, there's method in my madness down the road. I'm looking for her to get filled with the Holy Ghost. So I got to keep that. I thought you did a great job. I enjoyed it. That's what it says. Now, if you're married, it's different. Where's my bread? Hey! Where's my socks? Can I get an underwear without these holes in them? Hey! Okay, that's going to lead to a divorce before you get your AI. Hey, start using a little wisdom. You ignorant Christian. <laughs> Stupid. James 3. The tongue's like a fire, particularly if you're married, in a world of iniquity. Why? Because iniquity is inside of you, and what you say is revealing it. You can tell if somebody's got iniquity in their soul, can't you? You just sit around and listen to them. Yeah. 
what's called being a counselor. I mean, what you do is you sit and listen to people. That's all I do all day. And generally speaking, when what a person says is what's in there. Yeah, I mean, there's exception. You've got to weed through it. Fraud, deceit, con artists. Yeah, that's all there. Your tongue is uh, horrible. It's part of our melos, body parts. It defiles. Spulao means to stain. The whole body. How does it do that? Well, eventually it gives you autoimmune disease. You're constantly spewing negativity and hurtful things. It eventually destroys you. Yeah. Not just others. You got a big mouth is what you got. See? You need a mouthectomy. <laughs> <laughs> it's set on fire of the wheel of nature. Now that's a weird phrase. It's the only place in the Bible uh, that phrase is there. Trachus Genesis, it means a wheel always runs the same way and always looks the same, and that's the way nature is. Nature just runs on its own, is what he's saying. So once you develop a filthy, nasty, ugly tongue with iniquity in your heart, you'll start doing that naturally, is what, he, what the prophet's trying to tell us. Brilliant. If you keep saying that and you keep behaving that way, he will suddenly do that naturally. That's why the Bible requires you to renew your mind on the Word of God so that your old life of mental derangement goes down and your new life in Christ runs naturally, like nature. Like on Jurassic Park, the guy said, nature finds a way. And it, it, and it does. It runs. God set it up to run on its own. Right? I, I take my uh, hummingbird feeder out in the backyard. I got to refill it. I put it in the backyard. I like hummingbirds. Old people in Sun City like hummingbirds. <laughs> I put it out in the tree and I go in the house. I look back out to see a hummingbird and the honeybees found it. <laughs> well, you can't kill a honeybee, that's a federal offense. So I just put one in the back for the honeybees, put one in the front for the hummingbirds. It's called negotiation. <laughs> yes. Only those of us with monster IQs are able to do these things. What am I doing there? I didn't advertise honeybees. They just naturally came there. Honeybees do what they do Without thinking, they just do it naturally. The Holy Ghost is trying to get you into a spot in your life where you just do Christ naturally. Okay. Okay. You don't have to think about not cussing somebody out. It's not there anymore. This is good preaching even though it doesn't sound it. Now, let's go to these. These are terrible wounds, soul wounds. Eating disorders are not illnesses. They are soul issues. Fools, because of their transgressions and iniquities, are ana, self-abusers. No kidding. Cutters, pickers. That is coming out of Fear and soul wounds. Alimina anorexia, eating disorders, obesity. Deep down inside, the person hates themselves. Carrying guilt, carrying shame, self-disgust, spirit of rejection. He's always there behind all these illnesses. You'll find him if you look for him. self-abusers. I watched a movie years ago. I forgot the title of it, but it was something in Las Vegas. But anyway, this guy, alcoholic, Las Vegas. leaving Las Vegas. Huh? What? No. 
No, it was Lefiri. Lee, I think it was some other. But anyway, this guy went to Las Vegas to die. He was an alcoholic. And he quit his job. Wasn't that the movie? Yeah. What was it called? Leaving Las Vegas. Leaving Las Vegas. The guy quits his job. And he's had it and it's over. And he's going to go to Las Vegas. And he's going to kill himself by drinking himself to death. He hasn't got the guts to... So he's going to end it this way. Well, he goes to a prostitute in Las Vegas and he falls in love with her. And she falls in love with him, which is unusual. Well, she tries to keep him from drinking himself to death and tries to save him. And love was not enough. Love's not enough. Love is not enough for an addict. They won't quit. They got to hit a bottom. They won't quit because they love you. They won't quit because they love themselves because they don't. They hate themselves. And once again, if you dig down in that addict soul, you will find our old friend. He's not a friend. The spirit of rejection from childhood. He's hiding in there somewhere. Hunt for him and you'll find him. They're self-abusers. Their soul abhors food. It's an emotional issue. It's not a physical one. They draw near to the gates of death. Have you ever uh, counseled any of these kind of patients? It's shocking how close they'll die on you. And in severe cases, they hospitalize them and force feed them. They force feed them. They have to be retrained like babies to learn to eat again. They have to be put on a schedule. They have to be at structured amounts, gradual acceleration. It's bad. However, you get them soul wounds out of there and those fear spirits out of there, they've all got fear spirits. That thing goes away within weeks. They recover, boom, boom, like that. But at the hospital, they don't give you a spiritual solution. That's right. I mean, they do the best they can. They're good people. Psalms 42, why are you cast down a shana is sunk, my soul. That is a typical AI patient. They get so tired and so pooped with life, at some point, they just want to die. And that's that long-term, they call dysthymia, it's long-term depression. It's just a slow slide click. And they want to get out somehow. Lamentation 1, these things I weep, my eye runs down with water, the comfort that should relieve my soul is far from me. Loneliness, it's a horrible soul buster. Job 14, his flesh upon him shall have pain, his soul shall mourn. Yeah, once the demons give you your AI, they use the pain of it to drag you down emotionally and spiritually. Perfect pattern. They become mourning, and eventually, when self pity steps sets in, you're close to the end. Self pity is the final drop. My children are desolate because the enemy has prevailed. Translation they get so tired, so depressed, so exhausted, they give up. I surrender. And they go down. They reach a hopeless point. With the Holy Ghost around, that need not happen. No, not with him around. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, you'll see in a minute. Judge by what? All right. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. This is a law like gravity in the Word of God. And it has it is indiscriminate. Sinner or saint doesn't matter. Gravity ap applies to Christians uh, before the rapture. And 
Gravity applies to sinners. And so does this. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap it. Period. No matter what. And so if you're a born again Christian in your spirit, man, you got wounds on your soul, you got sicknesses in your body, you will be a dead born again Christian earlier than you should have died. Well, it must have been my time. No, you chose your time. You didn't repent, you didn't change, you didn't get rid of these wounds. You didn't forgive that person. You didn't get those apologies out. You didn't do it. So you made your time. Now you die. Because you chose to die. God gets blamed for stuff all the time. That he didn't do. He that sows to his flesh shall of his flesh reap. Thora. Decay. What a perfect description of an autoimmune disease. It's a slowly progressing slide down an ugly hill. Not fun. He that sows to the Spirit shall get what you're going to get tonight. You're going to sow to the Holy Ghost tonight. And the AI comes out. The wound comes out. Cut it. The curtain draws. There's your, there's your generational curse history. Uh, your AI actually started in your family tree before you were born. Believe it or not. The same patterns can be found in your family tree. The same sins can be found in your family tree. And the same iniquity in your soul can be found in your family tree. You wouldn't believe it. They're, they're up there. If you dig up the tree... You'll see our old buddy, the spirit of rejection there, picking off this, that person. Yes, you'll see your alcoholism, your drug addictions, your sex addiction. You'll see the pattern, criminals, divorces. It's all right there in your family tree. This is a part of your family tree. Ancestry.com does not promote. <laughs> Uh-oh, there it is. Now you know why you're sick. The roots in your soul are causing your illnesses, your, in many cases, your mental illnesses, your emotional issues, your spiritual blockages, and your failure to live a powerful Christian life, which is what you were called to do. You were called to be a demon fanny kicker. I made that up but it sounds right you've been called by God fight back you have not been called to be a gutless cowardly loser sitting around all the time taking a beating that's not you you need to change your identity you need to repent tonight you got roots dug in there from childhood some of these roots are still in there. They're in your soul. They're being maintained by your mind. And if you dig down in there, you'll see our old friend. <coughs> the spirit of rejection. He's there if you look for him. You find him. Once you get him, he's got to be killed. You're on a hunting expedition expedition tonight you're going to hunt down that monster and you're going to take him out using spiritual weapons the blood that Jesus shed his broken body for your healing the broken body of Christ will wipe out any autoimmune disease but the soul has to be fixed first the Holy Ghost wants to heal you but you're still pissed off at this person, oop, blocking your healing. Not going to happen. Hello? All we got to do is have a quick session with Brother Mike. And here's how he does it. Repent! <laughs> Apologize. Oh, gosh. Uh, the Pope should be calling me. That's amazing, Mike. That's deep. 
<laughs> no, it's not deep. And a casual reading of God's word, if you're interested, will come up with that one. Repent, change, forgive, apologize. Revolutionary. <laughs> Brother Mike, can I get your autograph? <laughs> Listen, these roots are what you have to look for for autoimmune diseases. Will you remember that? This important slide I want you to keep for the rest of your life. It's not something superficial. And Christianity makes it superficial. Let's just go pray and have them get healed. That's what the Christians say. Uh, the word of faith kooks, just speak it out. Be healed. Wait a minute. There may be more here than meets our eye. Uh, you've got multiple sclerosis. When did that set in? Oh, when I was 42. And when you were young, what happened to you? Well, my uncle did this to me. Then I got that. Then I had this. And then my ex did that. And the other ex did that. How do you feel about them? Oh, I'm fine with those old bastards. Uh, therefore, whoa, hold on. Hold on a minute. Wait a minute. I just found a root that's causing the AI disease to flourish. See, and I just investigated it because I'm an investigator. <laughs> it's hiding somewhere in the soul. Something's blocking the person's healing. The addict keeps relapsing. You look around in the soul and there you'll find the root of it. It's usually shame, usually self-hatred, usually bitterness, something like that. If you hunt around in there, you can find it. And you can see that person healed. See many of them healed. Okay. That's... The truth. God's word heals body and soul, does it not? Yes. Psalms 147, there it is. The Lord always goes for the heart. He wants to bind up the wounds of the person's heart. That's the abuses, the pain, and whatever you've suffered through. It happens all the time with kids. These parents split up. Bang! There's a divorce trauma. And then the child usually stays with the mom. Not always. And then uh, the mom then either brings in a stepdad or a live-in. Well, the live-in dad, a small percentage of them, love the kid. It's not their kid. And in fact, in most cases, they're hostile to the stepchild, or they don't care, or they prefer their kids from their previous marriage. They're divorced over here, and they got two kids over there, so that takes their time, energy, and money. This kid gets neglected or abused or beaten, it's easier to abuse emotionally, physically, and sexually a stepchild than it is a natural child, percentage-wise. There's a greater percent. So the stepchild develops a bitterness toward the stepdad or mom, right? The stepmom comes into the family unit and prefers her kids, which they brought in. Now you've got a blended family. What do you call that? A carnival. <laughs> now you have competing personalities for everything. Food, attention, love, affection, time, energy. There's a competition going on between unknown. These people don't know each other. They don't. Who are you? So these roots start click growing. Bitterness, hatred, frustration, anger, loneliness, abandonment, a sense of injustice drives into the child. And 50 years later, they're in a wheelchair. 50 years later, they're taking pills and because their heart is not healed the word of god forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases 
Psalms 107, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. First Chronicles 7, 14. It's so simple here, isn't it? Everybody's got this verse memorized, don't you? You know? All right, let's memorize it then. If my people, which are called by my name, shall... All right, who's going to do that tonight? Raise your hands. Two people over here, three or four there. Oh, lots of them over here. This is the revival section. <laughs> then, then it says, uh-oh, then, oh God, you do these four first. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? These four come first. That's what it says. Then it says, that's a, that's a conjunction, then I will a blueprint for a miracle. Oh, that's a great verse, isn't it? Psalm 68. If I regard a nickel in my heart, your AI disease can be blocked because you've got bitterness toward yourself, others, here, there, and you can't get healed. Is anybody catching this? I'm not making this up, folks. It's right here. I mean, I see it in my counseling practice all the time, but I, I got it here first. I went here first, and I noticed this. Hey, wait a minute here. This is a spiritual thing, right? I had to learn like everybody else. I'm just a regular person like everybody else's. Let's go to husbands now. Husbands, dwell with your wife according to knowledge, giving her honor. Tameo means to place value on as the weaker vessel. Oh boy. Let me catch our breath and let's go to the last half of the verse if you can still sit there. As being heirs together of the grace of life, right? A man is to leave his mother, father, and they become the flesh. Okay? What's the problem with most of these marriages? In laws. The person is to leave. You know what leave means? That's right. Leave the battle axe. Leave grumpy. <laughs> My wife, I think, went home. Uh, <laughs> When I uh, got married, uh, I forget what number this is. Um, her mother wanted to uh, make an impression. And uh, I straightened her out. <laughs> Oops. Now here's a special problem with husbands wives don't have. And here's the scripture. These are gone and these are now together. This is God's version of it. Leave your mother and your dad. Leave them. Now go here. Okay. When you go here, the husband is the head of the household. Okay? When you have a female-dominated home, it's loaded with demons. And they hit the kids. Then you have all kinds of behavioral problems. Or if you have a home where the father's absence, common nowadays, <coughs> divorce. So now you've got a female-dominated home with the kids run by women. I mean, they're good people. They're doing the best they can, but I'm talking about God's system. The system is father, mother, kids, husband, wife, children. Does that make sense? That's the system he set up. He said, I want it run this way. Humans told God, God to shove it and said, we'll run it any way we want to. To women, to men, to trans, pets, anything. <laughs> now anything goes. 
See? Well, when anything goes, then the demons move in, the soul wounds, the, the breakups, the dysfunctional families, the pain, all of it begins to filter through the family. See? If that makes sense. The home's supposed to be husband, wife, kids. When this is jacked up, system collapses. Kids dominating the home, permissive parenting, codependency, it all falls apart. Marriage falls apart. Family falls apart. Strife, <coughs> sorrow, sadness, and decades later, autoimmune diseases crop up. Addictions crop up. Husband, wife. Husband dishonoring the wife. He prays. The demons block his prayers. What's the problem now? The head of the household can't get his prayers answered. The family is screwed. <laughs> if the father can't get his prayers answered, the rest of the family's in trouble. Rabbit. Okay, ekopto means to cut down like you would a tree with an axe. You pray and the demons are chopping your prayers down. Okay. Ephesians 5. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. Your husband, not somebody else's husband. Okay. Las Vegas, San Francisco, whatever. Swapping is popular. Wife swapping. Husband swapping. Swingers. Okay. Now, there's a lot of benefits to swingers. You don't have to go to bars and pick people up. There's some, there's some structure to it. You can schedule different things. But what you're doing is you're swinging is you're letting all these demons in. And you're submitting yourself to somebody else's husband or wife, if this is making sense. And you're picking up transfer spirits from these other people you're sleeping with. And husband, wife, kids. Okay? Blended family, the wife puts the kids ahead of the husband, the stepdad. Particularly if the stepdad doesn't like the kids. So the mom comes to their defense. So the mom then favors the step key. They're her kids over the stepdad. So now you got the kids here, the stepdad here, the mom's the doormat. Right. What are women supposed to do? Be slaves? No, it's a subordination. It's a recognition of position. It's like the divine trinity. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Nobody's better than anybody else. It's a structure. God is a structured person. See? So the Holy Spirit's down here. He's much less person than Father. No, it's a structured system. No, nobody, husband, wife, kids, nobody's better than anybody else. No one's loved more than anybody. It's Father setting a structure to it. So it's organized and works properly. The Trinity is perfectly organized, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and it works perfectly. This one agrees with that one, this one agrees with that one. They all work in total unity. That's what the Trinity means. There is one God, hear O Israel, the Lord your God is one. It's not one person, it's one in unity. See? When you get married, it's not one person. Two shall become one flesh. Well, you're not one flesh. Your wife has a, you're married, aren't you? You're not married? Uh, Arnie, take this guy out in the back. <laughs> when you get married, you're one, one in unity, one flesh, but you're not one flesh, are you? Yeah. There's two people there, for crying out loud. At least they are when they come into my office. <laughs> Husband and wife barreling them. It's his fault. No, it's her fault. Whoa, time out. I'll figure out whose fault it is. Because I'm lucky. That's why they call me lucky. Uh, listen, you have to submit to your position 
in the family or you're going to get demons and your prayers are going to be blocked. Yes. And you're going to have what we call a dysfunctional family. Am I helping anybody? Probably not, but I'm trying. <laughs> Mark 11, when you stand praying, a fiamme, release. Forgiveness means to release. See? And that's very hard to do with a blended family because everybody hates each other. Nobody started out with each other. They're all new. And the kids come in. They don't know each other. Incest statistically goes up in blended families for obvious reasons. They're not genetically related. Genetically blended families, this person usually likes their kids better than your kids. The kids usually have certain bonds with the genetic parent they don't have with the step parent. Family dynamics. When God forgave you of your sins, a fiamme, he released you of them. That's why they're gone. Okay? If you release something, you can get rid of it. But if you have to hang on to it, AI down the road, let it go. If you have ought against any, whoa, you also have to forgive them and you must release your ought. Your ought is your negative emotions you have about that person even though you've forgiven them. I forgave him, but I don't want to talk to him. I forgave my mother, but I don't want to see her. Uh-oh. Red flag. Ought. Just reared its ugly head in my office. Something's got to be done about it. Or, I can't get this person forgiven. You're not going to get forgiven or released by God if you don't release these other people. How do I know that? I read it here. So your Father in Heaven may release you a fiamme of your <coughs> paraptima trespasses or errors, mistakes, screw-ups, failures, what have you. If you're going to hold something against somebody else, God's going to hold something against you. If you want to be forgiven and given a second chance because you screwed up the business, the relationship, the family, the whatever, hey, you're going to have to learn to do it to others. And one thing you don't want to have, trust me on this one, is God not releasing you of your failures. Notice it didn't say sins there. Yeah. John 16. Here's another one. I told you all these things so you would not be offended. Uh, taking offenses may be the number one or number two Killer of Christians. Taking an offense. Where does it start? If they're hard on themselves, number one, it's them. Number two, it's usually a spouse. Number three, kids. Number four, somebody at work. You can get the idea. It's usually somebody close to you. But in our society, the demons are really killing us. He gets people to take political offenses. Now, things are so bad out there, you've got the Clinton people and the Trump people, and they don't just disagree anymore. They hate each other, and that is ought. Okay? Can you imagine going to hell over Hillary Clinton? <laughs> I can't even imagine sitting in a fiery pit screaming, I hate Hillary. Look, check it. If hating Trump, it's not worth it. It's not worth your soul. You didn't hear me. Nobody's listening. It's not worth hating Trump to burn in hell. Okay? Stop it. 
I haven't preached that sermon in about six years. I need to do that stop it one again. I just felt an unction. <laughs> Listen, taking offenses is the worst thing you can do as a Christian. It starts every church fight and every church split. If you dig down there, you'll find two people somewhere sitting there, and they got that look on their face. You see it? Oh, yeah. It's choreographed. As soon as you see that look, you got a church split coming. That's right. They're probably Baptists. <laughs> Boom. Split. Baptists split more than any other group. Unbelievable. And it all started out with a, like, I'm appalled at, what, what'd you say? That's the second thing. What? As soon as you hear that what? Oh, this place is screwed. It's over. <laughs> and as soon as you take offense, here, decades later, that could grow into an autoimmune disease. They're constantly taking offenses at people. Come on. When Jesus went home to Nazareth, let's close, he couldn't wait to get home. <coughs> oh, man. Has that ever happened to you? Couldn't wait to get home. He had all his friends he grew up with. And he knew some of them had autoimmune diseases. He couldn't wait to heal them. He was going to see mom again. I don't know if Joseph was still alive, but let's say he was. Couldn't wait, couldn't wait to see his stepdad. Couldn't wait to see his school chums. Couldn't wait to go to the synagogue again where he started out and just open up the word and then have a massive healing and deliverance and incredible meeting. Couldn't wait to do it. He was so looking forward to it and really looking forward to it because back then, you know, you didn't get anywhere too fast. You had to walk. So walking allows you to think a lot. Driving allows you to think a lot and then get in an accident. <laughs> While you're walking, the person ponders things as they're walking because walking is boring. So your mind has to do something. Have you ever been to a gym and seen all those people in the treadmills? They're all doing something because treadmills suck. <laughs> no one, no one likes a treadmill. Everyone hates them except the people who have OCD <laughs> and have exercise addictions. But every regular person hates the treadmill. So what are they doing? The gyms put up TVs, clown shows. Uh, they're reading books. They're looking at something on their thing. They're doing something. Why? They don't. Nobody likes walking. Well, he was walking and pondering. Couldn't wait to get home. And he gets to the synagogue. He's ready to go. God's ready to go. Father couldn't wait for his for Jesus to get home. He was watching the whole thing. Anxious. Everybody excited. Who is this guy? Wait a minute. You know, how does he know all this stuff? Where did he get all this power at? What is, they started nitpicking him. And then they took an offense. What happened there? The same thing that happened to you. As soon as you started taking offenses, you lost your miracles from God. You lost the presence of God. You lost the communion of the Holy Ghost, the Greek word koinonia. Your partnership and relationship with God was then destroyed. You're sick with an AI and you can't get healed. Your marriage is broken, rotten, and it sucks. Your life stinks. Your Christian life's a failure. Why? They took an offense, and it says he could not do any miracles there because... Taking an offense leads to unbelief. When you're offended at someone, you don't trust them anymore. If you don't trust them, you don't believe in them. And this incredible revival, while Jesus is walking, I know he's thinking this, 
every person in town is going to get healed. All my old friends. Everybody is going to get healed when I get there tomorrow. I'm sure he was thinking it. I know he was. Because that's his M.O. That's how he's built. He wants to help you. He doesn't know anything else. He can't figure anything else out. He always wants to help. And God can do anything. Oh, far from it. There's many things God can't do. And one of them is heal a bunch of unbelievers. Who take offenses. You want to end your miserable life here tonight? Just repent of it. Taking offenses. Now, I could have taken an offense at that mega church for telling everybody not to come over here. I could have done it, right? If I was ignorant, I would have. Oh, we don't play that anymore. What's going to happen tonight? Here's what's going to happen. Isaiah 35. The ransom of the Lord shall return to Zion with songs and everlasting joy. That's what you're going to get. They all obtain joy and gladness. That's a replacement to an AI disease. Sorrow and anaha, groaning from grief, is going to leave you. You didn't know I was prophetic, did you? Yeah. I got to get on TV. Malachi 4. To you that fear my name. Not fear yourself, not fear others, not fear man, not fear demons. I said, fear the Lord. The Son of Righteousness shall arise with in his wings. You will grow, go forth. And he's using an analogy here we don't use anymore. You know, cows and calves are not working here. They would have worked where I grew or where I'm from, Kansas. There's a lot of farmers there. But this was a positive thing. I know you're looking at it and go, oh, I don't want to be like that. No, that back then it was a positive thing. Because the calves and all the animals were happy to get out of the stall. They couldn't wait to go out to the pasture and feed. They were so happy. They were, it was fun. They were all in a good mood. They'd go out and eat and have some flatulence, and then they would look at each other and maybe a little mating. And it was a fun time out in the pasture. That's the point of the verse. I'm trying to explain it. Not doing too good. You are going to repent of what tonight? Let's close with this. Saying stupid, hurtful things about yourself and others. That deep silence is bothering me. I was hoping to get a okay out of that, or a yes I am, or something. To self-disgust and self-criticism. That ends tonight. <laughs> Regrets and chronic negativity ends tonight. Bitterness and anger toward people who have hurt you and abused you in the past. That gets nailed to the cross. Amen. Your ex is going to be prayed for tonight. We are going to bless them, and we're going to give them to God. You're going to take your stepdad or your stepmom and do the same. You're, you're going to ask God to forgive them and bless them. If they're dead, you're going to apologize to the Lord for all the bad feelings you had for them, and you're going to release that person from your soul tonight. Hello? You are going to forgive yourself for all your failures and all your perceived failures. Ladies, you're going to forgive all these bad men. You're going to stop blaming God for stuff he didn't do. Blaming God will cut your benefits off instantly. Nobody likes to get blamed for stuff they don't do. He's the same. Bitterness, the cancer of the soul. I really believe bitterness is the root of cancer, but I, I can't prove that yet. Bitterness and strife will kill you. And guess what? 
it will leave Matthew 9 we'll close with this Jesus said to this boy laying on the cot he was obviously paraluticus which means spinal cord injury he was probably a quadriplegic be my guess you know the story they brought him down there couldn't get him in brought him in through the roof laid him down there lowered him down somehow and you would have thought the intelligent thing would have been to oh there's guys paralyzed let's get him healed no God God looks on the heart man looketh on the outward appearance but God always looks at the heart first he looked down at the boy and saw his heart and told him they're saying be of good courage have courage I'm going to fear me release you from your sins what was the kid doing like any like the vast majority of people who get in accidents and injure their spinal column they end up blaming themselves why did I go why did I get on that bike why did why did I ski there why did I do this why and all these whys hit them constantly because they're alone a lot and they're in bed a lot and their mind runs with demons the demons put these regrets in their mind constantly flooding them with these thoughts well if you had done that and if you had done this if you'd have done there and if you'd have gone there that wouldn't happen then this it's your fault everything's your fault you're laying here because it's your fault you have to live with yourself the rest of your life you can't even go to the bathroom look at you you look ugly you're skinny you're, you're and it runs on and on well Jesus saw that in a flash of a gift of knowledge and he knew that the heart issue was more important than the physical illness <coughs> so he went to the most important thing first which was healing the poor kid's soul what's the first thing he did to the widow of Naim the woman's husband's dead her only son's dead she's broke no jobs no future no one to take care of her when she gets old she's lost everything the kids laying in the coffin dead you would have thought if you could resurrect people you'd have done the kid first wrong man looks on the outward appearance God looks on the heart he went to the woman first Doing what? The heart, a broken heart, hurts more than body pain. A broken heart is more devastating than a illness. A broken heart is the worst thing you can live with. Today, today, those people, the parents of them kids shot, are in much worse shape than anybody in the country. They all have broken hearts and the Holy Ghost is the incredible healer of the brokenhearted Isaiah 61 he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted let's let's pray thank you Jesus youtubers stay right there I'll lead you, I'll lead you through your healing here and bring me up that uh, handheld mic if you would thank you Jesus Lord uh, a lot of my friends showed up for the uh, seminar tonight I thank you for it I thank you for your word I did my best to explain how the soul and the body and autoimmune diseases relate to one another but as you know I I'm not able to help anybody. It has to be done by the Holy Spirit. I don't have any abilities or skills of any kind. We are looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And we are looking to you right now. We're looking to you right now. I want you to forgive each person here who has a soul wound, has bitterness toward themselves or someone else or someone in their past 
I want you to forgive each person who has regrets. Each person angry at a stepmother or father, a stepbrother or sister. Every person here who was hit by the monster from childhood, the spirit of rejection. I want you to bless them and heal them tonight, Lord. For tonight is the night where you heal autoimmune diseases, but you will heal their soul first. Just like you did the widow of Nain. I saw you do it because I just read it. And if I read it, I saw you do it. Just like you healed that boy on the cot. He had a broken, broken, crushed heart. And you healed him first. There. And each person here who has any negative feelings about themselves, each person, they're going to repent of it in the name of Jesus. So they can be healed. Each person here who has bitterness toward an abuser, a cheater, a liar, a betrayer, each person here, each one, they are going to repent of this sin and they're going to release it to you. Each person here has a soul tie tied into a dysfunctional family member, an ex-lover, a dream, anything. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I'm looking for you to break that soul tie tonight so your people can be free. I pray, Lord, for these four or five people who are sitting here. They've got pride and arrogance, and they're not going to do anything. I'm going to ask you to crack them with whatever it takes to get them to change. I'm sorry to have to ask you that, but I feel I have no choice because their lives are of great value to you, and their arrogance and vanity and pride and their religious knowledge is going to destroy them. I'm asking you to crack them some night, whatever night it is, and bring them back here or somewhere else so they can be healed or delivered. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Yeah. Now just raise your hand and wave at me if you have Ought toward yourself because you did or said or something in your past that was very uh, bad and you have having trouble forgiving yourself. Just raise your hand real quick. Right. Oh, good. There's only a couple. Okay, come down here and see me right now. I want to pray for you before you leave. You look at yourself in the mirror and you don't like what you see. Because your past, your past is still your present. Your past is still your present. And the ministry team is going to come up and help me here. Stand right here and look at me. Thank you. Your past is still in your present. And because it's in your present, it's blocking your anointing, your gifts, and your blessings from God. And you know it is. You know it is. You don't need me to tell you. You got problems. And you know what they're related to. You're, you're hard on yourself. You're hard on yourself. You're, in, you're nitpicking yourself because of your failures. God does not nitpick his children, he never does it. Never. Nitpicking is criticism. God does not criticize you. There's no need to criticize you. Everybody else does. God's not going to pile on you like demons and people do. It's not going to happen. He's not going to do it. And you've got to repent of thinking he's looking at you with a critical eye. 
That's a lie. That's not true. It's not true. Will you forgive yourself tonight? <coughs> and do it by faith, not by feelings. Even if you don't feel it, would you be willing to forgive yourself? Come out. Would you be willing to forgive? You gonna? You sure? Yes. All right. Of the people uh, standing here, uh, you do. Don't give your name. But what is it? Rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis. I don't know yet. I get like sharp pains in my back where it almost it paralyzes me kind of for about six years. Rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid? Okay. Anybody else? Only two? Anybody else have an AI? Come up here and see me. She does? What is it, hon? A lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them. IBS. IBS and uh, arthritis. Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia. Yeah. Okay, did you hear that? IBS. Fibromyalgia. All right. I have a fever. Yeah, was that an accident? Yeah. What do you got? I, I I don't know. Uh, I went to saw a doctor and he's trying to rule stuff out. He said it could be a possibility of lupus. Arthritis. 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 Okay. okay. Now, if I was to ask each one of those about their abrosation. It's autoimmune disease. It's um, I guess something with liver. What's the name? Rosacea. How do you spell that? R O S C E A. What did she say? Oh, it's a skin. Oh. Okay. okay. Now these autoimmune diseases. I know this is going to sound nuts. They're soul diseases. And I was, if I was to ask each one of them. Were they hurt bad as children? Were they hurt bad from <coughs> marriage? Did they have an accident? Did they have bad feelings about themselves? Did they have chronic negative thoughts? Did they have... What happened to you when you was a kid? Um, a lot of put down from parent. Mm -hmm. X. Also, um, verbal and psychological abuse, and one time physical, and that's when I left. <sighs> um, raped when I was 12, had a baby. Um, Verbal uh, from my mom. Yeah, there's, I'm good. Did you hear that? Okay, hey, we, we read the scriptures. Yeah. Let's pray then. Father God, I took a couple examples from my friends on YouTube to illustrate what we were trying to see tonight. And it couldn't be any clearer. To me, it is. It can't be any clearer anyway. And 
right at this moment, we're all going to repent in the name of Jesus of negative thoughts and feelings about ourselves right now. Come on. Dear Jesus, please forgive me for every negative thought, every negative emotion I have ever had for myself. Please forgive me for every ounce of ought I've ever had for you, Lord, <coughs> blaming you for not answering my prayers, blaming somebody else for my problems, hating someone else, hating myself, wanting revenge. God, forgive me for what I've done in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive me, I pray right now. I'm so sorry for my sin, for disobeying you, for taking in these wounds. I'm so sorry, and I'm asking you right now, to forgive me, Lord Jesus. <coughs> forgive me, what's that? Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Get out of that body. Go. Come out right now. I release this ought in the name of Jesus Christ. I release this ought in the name of Jesus Christ. Now repent of it right now. Negative thoughts about others and myself. I bind this evil right this second because the person I hurt the most when I hated myself, Lord, was you. The person I hurt the most when I hated somebody else was you. And I apologize to you, Lord, for what I've done in the name of Jesus. I repent of this wickedness of my soul. I repent of it right now. I release this wound off my soul in the name of Jesus. And I command this thing to come out and the spirits attached to this wound. I command this thing to come out. Get out of that body. Come out. Let's go. Come out. I command you to come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus, and I release my soul to the Lord. Come on, raise your hand. Open up my heart. I open my heart, Lord. Come out, Spirit. Come out right now. Repeat flow. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come on, ladies. Every ugly man. There it comes. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Every ugly man the devil sent into my life to criticize me, to degrade me, to abuse me, I command this wound to come out of my soul right there for my stepdad. I command this spirit to come out right now trying to kill me with this autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease, I bind your power in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to come out. Come out, I said. Pride and arrogance, I command you to come out right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Come out. Spirit, come out of that back right this second. Spirit, come out right now. Go. Go now. Touch. Heal. Come out of me. Come out. Come out of me right now. Every negative thought I had from my relatives and myself, I repent of it. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get him out of there. Come out right now. Satan, loose your hold. Satan, I bind your power. Satan, come out in Jesus' name. Sin, come out of my life. Sin and evil. Wickedness and evil. Come out of there. Right now, hold that. Come out right now. Come out. Get out of me. Demon of fear. I bind your power. I command you. Come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out right now. Come out right now in the name of the Lord. Hatred for my mother. Come out of there. Hatred for mother, come out. Hatred for mother, come out. Arthritis, go. Come out of that body right now. Get out of there. Racism. Hatred for my dad. Dad abuse. I command you to come out. Evil. I command you to come out of me. Evil. Wickedness. Come out in Jesus' name. Wickedness. Art. Ought. Ought. Hating myself. Come out. Come out right now. Hating my body. Body dysmorphia. Hating my body. Food demons. Overeating. Using food as a comfort. I command you. Come out right now. Come out. Unbelief and doubt. Come out of there. Unbelief and doubt. Shyness. Shyness. Come out. 
fear of being in public, fear of failure, fear of being criticized. Come out right now, demon of fear. Come out of my body. Come out, come out. Come out. Arthritis, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of arthritis, come out right this second. Spirit, come out of my neck right now. Spirit, come out of my neck right this second. Come out of my vertebrae. Come out of my low back right this second. Go. Go. Come on, YouTubers. Put your hand on your body, YouTube. Put your hand on your body right where the pain is. If you have fibromyalgia, that is not a physical illness. That's a spirit. Usually caused by spirits of fear. What are you afraid of? Just confess it and cast him out. Spirit of fear, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of my body right now. Come out right now. Spirit. Come out of my back. Right now. Come out of my back. Get out of my back. He just got his healing. He just got his healing. What happened to you? My, my lower back was, was in pain, but... Yeah. Your back was hurting when you came out? You hurt it. It was an injury from baseball when I played in college. Injury from baseball? Yeah. Thank you, bro. Some baseball player's back just got healed, but that's not enough for the Holy Ghost. He wants a lot more than that tonight. He's looking for a whole rack of healings. That's how he does it. The Holy Ghost is greedy. He wants to get everybody sitting in the hands of Jesus. I command insecurity and low self-esteem to come out of me right now. Guilt, condemnation, shame. Come out of that body right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of that body right now in the name of Jesus. There's a lot. Who do we got to forgive? My dad. What do you do to you? Um, a lot of critical What's his name? Darren. Darren, take a big breath. Darren, come out right now. Go. Come out. Every demon from Darren, come out there right now. I forgive you. I release you from my soul right now. I release my dad right now. Daddy, I love you, but you must go now. Come out. Come out of me. Come out. Get out of there. Come out right now. Verbal abuse. Come out of me. Hating my body. Come out of me. Using food as a comfort instead of the Holy Ghost. I repent of it right now. I repent. Come out. Come out. Eating for fear demons. Come out right now. Get out of my body. Come out. God forgive me. Forgive me for bad feelings from my dad. Forgive me for criticizing you. Forgive me for hating when I was young. Forgive me for the art I had. Come on. I repent of it right now. I let my dad go. I let my dad go. Come out. Come out right now. Transfer spirits from adultery and fornication. Come out of my womb. Come out of my genitals. Come out of my breasts. Come out of my head right now. Adultery, come out. I command every spirit of witchcraft now to come out of the woman of God. Come out of there, you stinking witch. Go. Come out, you witch. Sorcery. White witchcraft. Christian witches. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Self-hatred. Self-ought. Come out. Go. Come out. I command these wounds to come off my soul right there. Come out. Come out. Come out there, you witch. Hurry up. Hurry up. Satan, I take total authority over you. I command my sin to leave now. Come out right this second. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out. Stop. Demon, stop shaking me and come out. Get out of my spine right here. Kundalini spirit. Church demons, go. Fire tunnel, prayer tunnel demons, come out. Come out. Prophetic demons, come out. Go now. 
Come out of there. Hey. You got healed? You get healed? <laughs> Satan, I command you to come out. That's how you talk to the devil. What's going on here? Like, I've gotten a lot of fights. 
Lord, I think the Lord's making us going to come back. Whatever the Lord is today, and I know that it's because of the Holy Spirit. There it is. I just felt it right now. It's breaking. Thank you, Jesus. Gail has to go. Lord, we forgive Gail for all the manipulation, all the controlling, Lord, all the nitpicking. Everything she ever did to him, to nitpick him, to control his, his everything, environment, everything that she did, and everything that she controlled, we forgive it right now, Father. We know that it has the power. We know that it has the Father God, I'm so sorry I got involved with so many familiar spirits and big Holy Spirit demons and fire tunnels and the prophetic movement. And I release this from my body right now, the transfer spirits. And I am it's there he is. Stop shaking her head. Here he here he comes. There he is right there. That's him. Come out. Come out. Stop shaking her and come out. Come out. Familiar spirit from a fire tunnel. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there. That's him shaking you. Get him out of there. Come out, devil. Kundalini. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Stop shaking your cup. There he comes. Get out of her stomach, you stinking spirit. Come out of that body. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Fire tunnels. Prayer tunnels. Prophetics. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Witchcraft. Christian witchcraft. Kundalini, come out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fake Holy Spirit demons, come out of there right now. Go. There he is. Stop shaking her. Stop shaking her. Come out. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come out. There he is. There he is right there. That's him. Come out of her. Transfer spirits. Go. Come out of her. Hurry up. Get out of there. Come out. Get out of body right now. Hurry up. Stop jacking around with him. Come out of here right now. Hurry up. Go now. Come out. Family. Family, what's wrong with you? Oh, I would like to pray for like uh, shyness. You said something about shyness. Oh, okay. Come on up here. Come out of me. Come out of me in the name of Jesus. Demon spirits, come out of me. Come out of me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come out of me, demons. Foul and unclean spirits. Come out of me in Jesus' name. Come out of me in Jesus' name. Oh, I just stay shy. I don't know. Hallelujah. Come out. You were shy before you No, I wasn't. Oh, you go. Oh, yeah. You go. Oh, yeah. You go. You go. Spirit of fear energy right there, anxiety right there. You get out of my body. Father, I'm so sorry for what I've done. I'm picking up these white witchcraft demons. I hate it. Fake Holy Spirit Shaking and jumping. This is kind of over. I'm praying for you.
same spot. Oh. 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 O
Thank you, God. You're so worthy, Jesus. You're so worthy, God, of praise. You're so worthy, Lord. You're so worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. You're so worthy, Jesus. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your love. I thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God. 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 You're worthy, God. You're so worthy of our praise, Lord. You're worthy of our love. You're worthy of our faithfulness to you. You're worthy. God, you're worthy. Jesus, you're worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy, Lord. You're so worthy, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. You're so faithful. What happened? Remember that I told you that? Yes, it's gone. It's gone. Like it, I can really feel the music. Did it go away? Did it come out? This man lost both his parents, their dad, and the spirit of grief entered him. And now it's coming up right now. Spirit of grief, I command you in Jesus' name, leave this man of God. Leave him and leave him at peace. Come out of his wife right now in the name of Jesus. There they come. They're coming out of his wife now. Spirits, come out of both of them. Go. Spirit of grief, come out. Spirit of sorrow and sadness, go. Spirit of misery. Misery. Get out of that body. Come out. Come out quicker. Sorrow and misery. I command you to come out in Jesus' mighty. Go. 
There it comes. There it comes. There they come. Go. Go. Come out of his throat. Come out of her back. Come out of her spine. Spirit of heaviness. Spirit of grief. Spirit of sorrow. Come out right now. Get out of there. Pornography. Go. Grief, sorrow, sadness, and pornography. Go out of this man of God. Go. Come out. There it comes. There it goes. Leave. Mourning. Come out. Mourning to be replaced with joy for the spirit of heaviness. Come out. I release my parents to the Lord right now. I release my parents to God. I let them go of my own free will. I let them go. There he goes. There's one. Come out next. Come out now. Come out now. Go. I release my parents to God in the name of Jesus Christ. I let my... My voice is coming back. Your voice is coming back. What was it gone? I couldn't talk. Couldn't talk. No. It's coming back now. What happened? Because... The spirit wouldn't let me talk. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Cry it out and then be healed. Cry it out and be healed. Come on. Let that grief and sorrow go. Out. What's her name? Was there an inheritance fight? Yeah. What's her name? Lori. Lori, close your eyes. Father God, wherever Lori is right now, I ask you to bless her. I want you to hunt her down and bless her. There was greed in this family when the parents died and there was an inheritance fight. Those are the worst fights you can have, is a fight in inheritance. It leaves deep wounds in every soul. And his sister is going to leave his body and his soul right now. And he's going to forgive her and bless her in Jesus' name. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully... There he comes. There she comes. Come out. Come out. I forgive you. Come out. I forgive you. Come out. There they're coming out now. The demons from the curses of his sister are coming out right this second. Go. Go. They leave the big ones. That's what I Hey, ask that guy what's wrong with him, would you? Yeah. Bring him up here. Come out right now. Come out. Get out of my stomach. Come out. <laughs> I'm getting my voice back. Voice it's back. coming back. I couldn't even talk. Evil, come out of my spine. Go. Evil, come out. Evil. Evil. Wickedness. Go. Release it. Go. Come out, devil. Come out. Get out. Come out right now. Get out of there. Come out. You got a, a beef over somebody over an inheritance fight? That's the worst fight there is, fighting over inheritance. I'm telling you. Ask any counselor or therapist. Inheritance fights are beyond bad. And they will leave soul wounds you will never get rid of. Just repent of it right now. Get out of there and come out right now. What are you stalling for? Stop recycling demons. I command you. Come out and never come back. No more sin. No more sin. Go. Hey, what's wrong with this woman? Yeah, I think 
If he's not still alive, she chooses to forgive him and release him. Whatever his name was, the rapist dad, come out. Come out of there. Come out. Right now. Come out right now. Come out of that body. <laughs> every wound, every abuser, every bad man, every ugly man I ever slept with transfer spirit in my body. There it is. Shame and grief. Come out, go. Shame and grief. Come out. Every transfer spirit. From every ugly man I ever slept with, come out of my body right now. Come out of my womb. Come out. Come out of my throat right now. Adultery. Fornication. There it is. Come out, you devil. Come out. There he is. Hurry up. Come out. Lift up. Lift up. Come out. Go. Come out. Heal. Come out. Oral sex. Come out of that mouth and that throat. Come out in Jesus' money neck. There it comes. Come out. Let's go. Get out of the body. There he comes. Come out. Come out. Oral sex. I command you to come out. Go. Come out of there. You pervert. You perversion demon. Come out of her back. Come out of her spine. Come out of that knee right this second. Come out. Go. Go. Hatred of men. Come out. Hating men. Go. Hurry up. Hating men. Sell pity. Pity parties. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. There he is. Come out. Leave her body right now. Come out. Native American witchcraft. Demon jewelry. Come out. Witchcraft. Go. Come out of there. Come out right now, you witch. Come out of that body. Right now. Shaman demons. Go. Shaman demons. Come out. Come out. Come out. Demon jewelry. Go. Come out. Come out. 
Medicine man spirit, go. Healers, come out. Healer, there he is. Come out, that's him. Come out right now. Healer, come out of her body right now. There he comes. Healer, go. Come out of her body. Come out. Native American healers, sweat lodge, shamans, in Jesus' name, I bind your power. Come out. All of it. All of it. Demon of poverty, come out. Go. Curses, go. Curses from the American government, go. Curses. Witchcraft. There's another one. Next, you're coming out next. Let's go. Come out next. Hurry. Hurry up. Come out. Come out of that knee. Spirit, leave her knee. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out of her feet right now. Go. Come out. Poison from medications. Come out of there right now. Drugs. Peyote. Come out. Pot. Go. Smoking. Come out. Alcohol. Come out. Alcohol demons. Go. Come out right now. Shut up and come out of there. Hurry up. There he comes. Go. Alcoholism. Go. Thus saith the Lord. Go. Get out of that body right now. Get out of there. Hurry up. Come out. Get out of that knee, I said. Come out now. Go. Come out of the other knee. Go. Heal. Go. Come out of her throat. Come out. Come out. Sexual perversion. Get Come out, you pervert. Come out of there, I said. Come out, I said. Okay, you've groaned enough. Come out right now. Come out. That's good. Get out of there. You sexual pervert, I bind your power right now. I'm Native American evil, witchcraft, sorcery, shamans, all of it. Come out. Curses. There he is. Come out right now. That's him. Come out. Get out of there. Come out. Come out. You done? Are you done? Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out right now. She commands you to go. She commands you to leave in the name of Jesus. She's not going home with a legion of demons. That's not going to happen. Come out right now. Legion, come out. Controllers. Come out. Self-hatred. Self-hatred. Go. Anger. Hate. Rage. Come out. Abusing her husband. I repent of it. Negative. Saying negative things to my husband. I repent of it. Right now. There he is. Come out. Here comes the husband. Go. Come out. Howard, you come out. There he is. Howard, come on out. Come out right now. Get out of there. Criticizing Howard. Saying negative things to him. Come out. Hurry up. Come out of there. All poison from medications. Come out of that body. Poison. Every drug. Every drug, come out of them joints. Come out of her feet. Come out of them knees. Go. Every joint, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Out. 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 Come out. Come out. Come out. Demons from watching movies. Come out of that body right now. Go. Movies, come out. Hurry up. Go in the name of the Lord. Patricia Petersons. Petersons? Yes. Close your eyes, Father God. 
I lift up the Peterson family to you right now. They abused this woman of God. They abused her. And we are going to forgive them for what they've done. She's going to forgive them for what they've done. We are going to forgive them right now. Here they come. Come out. Come out. Here they come. They're coming out now. The in-laws. Every curse from the in-laws. Come out. Every spell they put on her. Spells. Spells. Come out of her mind right now. In the name of Jesus. Come out of her. Come out. Go. Quickly come out. Come out quickly. 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 Go. Quickly. Go. Come out. Native American curses from in-laws. Go. We forgive them. We forgive them in the name of Jesus. I forgive them. I forgive them. I have mercy on them. And I release them from my soul right now. Go. Come out of my throat. I release my husband, ex-husband's demons. I let him go right now. Hey, what was her husband's name? I don't know. What was your husband's name? Philbert. Philbert. Philbert, come out of there right now. Go. There he is. Philbert. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> Philbert, come out. Every ought, all the ought I had for Philbert, I forgive him, and I now release him from my soul. I release him from my soul. I release my ex-husband from my soul. I release this food spirit from my soul right now. Pardon me? I need knee surgery. No, I'm at, I didn't ask you that. Is it still hurting? Yeah. Okay. Now, who else haven't you forgiven? You've got bad feelings about somebody. Who is it? Is it your... What's their name? The witch couple. I think it's Willis Dan. Dan Willis. Dan Willis? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and pray for him. Dan Willis, I pray for you. I release my husband right now. I let him out of my soul right this second. Everything he did to me, everything he said, all the hurtful words, all the criticisms, the sexual abuse, I release it now in the name of Jesus. His pornography, I let it go. Come out of my stomach. Come on. Here it comes. There it is right there. There it comes. There it goes. Forgive them. Come out, you pervert. Come out, that witch, that family. I forgive them in the name of Jesus so I can receive my healing to my knee. Heal in Jesus' name. Heal. Heal. Pray for a knee. Heal. Every man that ever touched me come out of me now. And, and the fear demons, go. Now they go. Fear spirit, come out. Get out of my throat. Come out of there. Hurry up. Come out of my throat right now. There he is. Come out of my throat. Here he comes. Good. Come out. Check your knee out. What'd she say? Stand up on your knee. Walk around over there. Any change? Your ankle what? Like a shark. Here, hold on a second. Stand right there. Go ahead. Ankle. Ankle. Thank you, Jesus. Demon, I command you to come out of that ankle now. Go. I let every person that hurt me, not just my ex husband, all of them. Do you have any kids that hurt you? Yeah. Friends? Have you ever hated yourself? One friend? What's her name? What? What's her friends, name? Friends from my, from my in-laws. Friends from your in-laws? What's her names? Patricia. Patricia, go ahead. Pray for her and ask God to forgive her. 
Go find out what she's doing. Come out. Come out right now. There it comes. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Go. Get out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. Go. Get out of there. Come out right now. Hurry up. Get out of that body right now. Make it snappy. Hurry up. Go right now. Hurry. Come out right now. I forgive them. In the name of Jesus, I forgive. You got any pain in your body? My leg, the side. What's wrong with your leg? I might have like Oh. Now, did you ever used to hate yourself? No. Did you ever hate anybody else? There. Stand up. Raise your hands there. Dear Lord Jesus. They hate me so much. Oh, you still haven't forgiven them now. You, you want to get healed? No, you haven't forgiven them. Yeah, you have ought. I divorced my brother and they, just they hated you for divorcing her, yes. their brother. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Take a big breath. Lord Jesus, these in laws hate my guts. They hate me, and I have to forgive them. Because if I don't, I'm not going to get healed. Come out. I want all of my in laws out of me tonight. Everything goes tonight. All of it. I want my calf healed. I want my calf healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Come out. What's going on here? Get out. What's going on with her? She's got ankle. She's got all kinds of problems. In her. Oh, hey. Now, who else you got bad feelings about? Come on. Did you ever hate my yourself? Sister, my sisters. So your my sister? sister. What'd she do to you? She rejects me. My little brother rejects me. My my brothers reject me. All right. That's it. And the lies that my mom tells. Your mom told lies? Yeah, about me. Okay. About me. What was your mom's name again? Bertha. Bertha. Okay, ready? Come on. Yes. Heavenly Father, name of you, I forgive my mother for lying about me. I forgive my mother for lying about me. And I want all her demons out of me tonight. And I forgive my mother from the bottom of my heart. I want these wounds off my soul and this sin off my soul. I want my mother's curse broken off of me. And my brother and sister, I forgive them for believing those lies and turning on me. And I release both of them from my soul. Both of them from my soul. How's it going? What's going on here? It's good to see you. Father God, I'm praying with this man of God standing here at the altar, and he's got curses on his life. And his future is bleak. He's going nowhere fast, and he wants to be healed. He trashed his parents when he was young. He rebelled against them and said negative things about them. He said curse words about them. He dishonored his parents. The Bible says, Thou shalt not dishonor thy mother nor thy father. Because it brings a curse on your life. And his life to me looks like it's cursed. 
So he's going to repent from the bottom of his heart right now and apologize to you, Lord, for what he'd done to his parents and beg for your forgiveness. In the name of Jesus, he's going to do it right now with everything he's got. God, forgive me, Lord, for what I'd done to my parents. I want this horrible curse off of me. She's got a lot. What about your brother and sister? Did you pray for them and release them? Yes. Is your knee still hurting? Knees Not front. as much. Very little. Your knee's better, but there's something else wrong with it? About the ankle? Nothing on the ankle. Nothing at all? Nothing. Your ankle and your is your knee's not completely healed or partially healed? I don't feel nothing. You don't feel nothing? Can you walk right? Stand up. I've always had a limp since I was a kid. Oh, is that from the hip? It was a bone softening disease that Where? I had when I was a little kid. Where was that? When I was a little kid. Where's the bone? It was in my, my leg on my right side. Which is over here? Yeah. Where at? Oh, and it right here? Infected. It got infected. And oh. Okay, hold on a minute. I cut my leg off back in the day. Okay. Keep going, Chloe. Keep fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor. Pastor, please. Walk around. Don't. Walk around. Could you do that before you came tonight? Because of your knee and your ankle and your hip? Okay, raise your hands while you're walking. Walk that way. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say it louder. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. God, forgive me for what I've done to my mother. Now, who's the next person you screwed over after your parents? Uh, just, just that. But then, yeah, that's a spirit of here. And the other one on the problem is you picked up a rejection spirit from your parents. No, when you were a kid, when you were a kid, the spirit got in your head, and then he let in another spirit, and now you got one spirit. I'll model your prayer. I'll, I'll model your prayer and show you how to do it. Father God, I repent of anything I ever said or did to hurt my mother or dad. I was wrong when I did that, and that was a terrible sin. That brought a curse on me, and I want this curse broke off my life. After, after I abused and degraded my parents and rebelled, a spirit of rejection entered my body and drove me into alcohol and drugs. And then he let in a spirit of fear. And now I have anxiety and stomach problems. In addition, a spirit got into my brain is causing me memory issues, concentration issues. A fogginess comes over my mind. And I know that this is all related to the devil. The devil done this. He sent me those spirits. And the fear demon also gave me blood pressure. And they're trying to kill me. So right now, Lord, I have to come clean with you tonight. I'm going to confess every sin I can think of. Just confess every sin you can think of. And tell the Lord you're sorry. Because when you committed all them sins, you hurt God more than you hurt the people you sinned against and more than you hurt yourself. So let's do it.
Go ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for this sin, then that one, then this one, then that one. And when I'm done, I'm going to cast out the spirit of fear out of my stomach. In the name of Jesus, I command this spirit to come out of my lungs and my stomach. By the power of the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to repent and confess my sins tonight. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If I will confess it, God will forgive me. But he will not forgive me if I won't acknowledge it. So I'm going to acknowledge it right this second. And when I'm done, I'm going to command this evil spirit to get out of my body in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to take command over this ugly demon. He's hiding right down there in my stomach. Check your calf up. What's the status on the calf? Can you walk on it better? Stand up here and walk on it. Walk over there. Check your calf out. Any change? Is the pain gone? Did you forgive your in-laws? You did? Did you stop blaming them and forgive them? And your calf got healed? Thank you, Jesus. Here, close your eyes, raise your hand, and tell the Lord how much you love him. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Love you so much, God, for helping me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for watching over me. Thank you, God, for the healing that I received tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I pray for those ask people. I ask you to bless them. Be good, to, be good to them, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm healed, Lord God. I'm healed. My leg don't hurt no more. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I give you the praise and I give you the glory. This lady's knee and, knee and ankle were, was healed after she forgave her abusers. That woman there's calves got healed after she forgave her in-laws. Another woman over here got rid of a kundalini spirit. She picked up in a prayer tunnel at a kundalini church somewhere. I think it was in California somewhere. Listen, if you will confess your sins and you will repent of it, the Holy Ghost is triggered. He moves. But if you try to cover it up or hide it, you're not going to get healed. I ran down a woman. Uh, she looked like she was my age or older. In her 60s, she was running out the door, and I ran her down there. I asked her why she was leaving. She said, well, she wasn't healed of arthritis. And then I asked her who hurt her in the past. And she said, oh, nobody. And I said, well, uh, what about, your are you married? Yeah. Did, is this your first marriage? No, it's my second. Well, what about your husband? What did he do to you? And her daughter, she goes, oh, nothing. Her daughter pipes up and tells me, oh, he used to call her fat and ugly. He used to verbally abuse her. He treated her like a second-class citizen, and on and on she went. And I looked over at the mother. I said, you know why you're not going to ever get healed of arthritis? Because you, I asked you who abused you, and you covered it up. You, you wouldn't tell me. You wouldn't repent of it. You wouldn't confess it. You got spirits from your ex-husband in your body, and those spirits gave you rheumatoid arthritis. And now you're running out the door, and you won't answer my questions. The daughter goes, yeah, you're right. I get it. And I said, okay. Since you're going to run out the door, why don't you call me later and come in for a counseling appointment? But you can see there, these people were getting healed because they confessed it and faced it. 
If you're not going to confess it and face it, you got to take it home with you. Huh? If you're not going to confess it and face it, and you're not going to be sorry for your sin, and you don't care, you got to take it home with you. Period. And you will never be healed. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent so the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord, Peter said. Listen, preachers, ministers, you can't water down the gospel and preach this rot gut stuff on TV. It's not happy-go-lucky prosperity Christianity. You're leaving your people in deep bondage. They are infected with spirits. They're getting sick and they're dying. Okay? Here's what we need to do. Change your preaching. Preach it hard. Preach it straight. Preach it with love. Anybody can be healed and delivered if they will meet the requirements of the gospel. For God is no respecter of persons. YouTubers, if you have demons in your brain taking over your thoughts, they probably got in there through a social media, computer games, video games, something like that. They can also get in through drugs or witchcraft. If these demons in your head, when they talk to you, you have to use 2 Corinthians chapter 10 to get them weakened enough to cast them out. You must take every thought they put in your head captive. If you do not take the thought captive, and you let that thought from a demon roam around in your head, a negative thought, a lying thought, whatever it is, if you do not catch that thought and rebuke it, and cast it out of your mind, the demons will take it as a sign from you that you liked that thought. You liked that thought. And so they're going to give you another one. Then they're going to give you another one. Yeah? You have to repent of listening to demons. You are a born again man or woman of God. You are not called by God to listen to demons. You're called by God to listen to the word of God and the Holy Ghost. You cannot get healed sitting around listening to demons. It's not going to work. Hello? It's not working. You can track brain demons pretty easy by understanding that the thought they put in your head is usually negative. And God never uses negative thoughts to help people. So you know right out of the gate, that thought is not from God. If the thought is negative, it either comes from you or it comes from a spirit. If it's you, you must repent of it. If it's a spirit, you must... Take it captive and cast it out. Do not ask God to forgive you for hearing a thought in your mind from a demon. That's not your thought. You must repent of receiving that thought and believing it. That's your sin. Not having the thought. The demons put thoughts in people's mind. That's their sin, not yours. But if you believe them and listen to them and keep them in there, that then becomes your sin. YouTubers, are you listening to me? This is a war for your mind. And you are to renew your mind in Christ. You are to have the mind of Christ, not sit around listening to negative thoughts Lying thoughts, grandiose thoughts from demons. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. Now, number 2. 
If you came here tonight and didn't get healed, all these other people got healed, but you didn't. All these other people got delivered, but you didn't. That means the demon knows something you don't. Okay? It's usually related to a lack of godly sorrow. Paul told the Corinthians that he wrote them a letter, and they became sad. And Paul wrote them a letter, and he said, Listen, I didn't mean to make you sad, but I wanted you to receive godly sorrow. If you sinned in your past and you did evil, wicked things and you are not sorry about it and you just want God to forgive you like somebody flipped the light switch, you are probably going to relapse if you're an addict and you're probably going to backslide if you're a Christian. As Paul said to the Corinthians, look what all these wonderful spiritual benefits happened when you had godly sorrow. If you don't have any godly sorrow, you can't get the demons out because the demons take it as a sign that you're okay with it. No big deal. Well, if your sin is no big deal to you, we are in some deep trouble. Godly sorrow is an incredible gift. Run with it. Number three. Conviction is your best friend. If your conscience convicts you over something, that's the best thing in the world. Conviction comes out of love from God. Condemnation comes out of hatred from demons. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Conviction is your best friend. When you feel conviction in your soul for something you said or did, embrace it quickly because you want the moving of the Spirit. You want the Holy Ghost to heal your conscience and your soul. That's how He does it. He convicts you. It's wonderful. You couldn't be any better. Number four, if you didn't get delivered tonight, you have to ask God to give you godly tears. Demons beat on people and they lie to them over a period of time. Years go by and they can't cry anymore. They have become dehumanized. They should have godly sorrow over their sin. They should have godly sorrow for hurting themselves or someone else, but they don't because they learn to be like Bill Clinton. They compartmentalize everything, and when you do that, temporarily it doesn't exist. It's compartmentalized in your mind. Open the compartment, bring it out here, face it, and let your godly tears flow. When the Holy Ghost sees that, he will jump on you like white on rice. He'll be right there to heal you and help you. If you are an addict and you've relapsed several times, your conscience is now seared and your heart has grown hard. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father God, people that have hard hearts, they do not receive conviction. They don't have any godly sorrow, and they've lost their tears. Sometimes they can't even cry anymore, period. The only thing that will save them is if they're broken. So I'm asking you right now, Father, in Jesus' holy name, I want you to hunt them down on YouTube. I want you to hunt them down right here at the Deliverance Center. And I want you to, as you do best, I want you to bring them to a point where they are broken. I want you to bring them to the point where they're broken. Where they're able to hear the Holy Spirit's still small voice speaking to their spirit man, speaking to their mind. So they can feel the love of God, 
that passes all understanding so they can be healed. I'm asking you to break them. Whatever it takes to break them, that's what you got to do. I don't know what it is. That's none of my business. But I'm asking you to break them before it's too late and before they waste their lives. In Jesus' holy name. Streamers, you go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Hit the post deliverance button. Also, if you're going into the ministry, please hit the deliverance training buttons on the top page of the website and go there and start going through your training for healing and deliverance. Go to the teaching button and hit the hit the teaching button and read the article How Satan Controls the Mind. Next Friday, next Thursday, healing, teaching, preaching, and deliverance at the Deliverance Center. God bless you. See you next time. Works.